Prior to loading the gel, protein samples are mixed with protein loading buffer. This prepares them for the gel run. While there are several recipes that you can find freely online, a typical loading buffer contains five main components. A detergent, a reducing agent, glycerol, a tracking dye, and a pH buffering agent. Let's take a closer look at each component of a typical loading buffer. Sodium dodecyl sulfate, or SDS, partially denatures proteins by binding uniformly to the native protein, disrupting hydrophobic and electrostatic interactions. SDS also assigns a net negative charge to the proteins, so they run toward the positive anode during the gel run, allowing separation by molecular weight. Keep in mind that SDS does not affect disulfide bonds, but that'll be taken care of by the reducing agent. Disulfide bonds are broken down by reducing agents like beta mecaptoethanol or dithiothreatol, also known as DTT. This includes intramolecular disulfide bonds as well as intermolecular disulfide bonds that hold protein complexes together. Reducing agents further denature proteins, allowing for separation by molecular weight. The addition of glycerol increases the density of your protein samples, allowing them to sink to the bottom of the wells. Without glycerol, your samples might splash from one well to the other, ultimately mixing your samples. A tracking dye, such as bromophenol blue or orange G, allows you to track your gel while it's running. When performing near-infrared western blots, blue dye should not be used as this can lead to increased background and low sensitivity. If you must use blue dye for your gel run, make sure to let it run completely off the gel before moving on with your western blot. Lastly, Trist is used as a pH buffering agent adjusted to pH 6.8 to mimic the pH of the stacking gel. This is critical as discontinuous gel electrophoresis requires specific pH in both the stacking and the resolving gels, but we'll talk more about that in the gel preparation course. Other buffers may be used depending on the type of gel that you are running. Detergents, reducing agents, and heat are responsible for linearization of proteins. Heat helps to denature proteins, allowing detergents and reducing agents to access buried amino acid residues. Samples are commonly heated to 95 degrees Celsius for about five minutes. Further denaturation with six to eight molar urea may be required when isolating histones or membrane associated proteins. Samples are then briefly centrifuged to remove insoluble material. I hope to have provided you with some information that will be helpful when it comes time to prepare your own samples for your own Western blot. Remember, a good Western blot starts with good sample preparation. In the next section, my colleague Carol will share with you some best practices when preparing protein samples for your own Western blot.